All right, good evening, everyone. My name is Tools. And for this session, we're going to be talking about women leading the next wave of Nigerian culture. Um, so first of all, when it comes to you know, gender inequality, it's something that is discussed often in this country, sometimes positively, but mostly negatively. But we, of course, have a group of trailblazers, uh, some very, very professional, very talented ladies that are leading this movement that are basically showing us that you don't need to be a man to be successful in this world. So I'm going to get them to introduce themselves and also to tell us a bit about what they do, who they are. I'm sure you know what they do, but just bear with me. So can I start with you? Hi everyone, my name is Toke Makingwa. I'm a media personality, I'm on radio, television, I have, I'm an author, um, entrepreneur as well, um, a social media influencer, motivational speaker, and I wear a lot of hearts, basically. Um, so, the baby girl for life, it's a brand. <laughs> it's a uh, hello everyone, my name is Tenny, Tenny Makanaki. Uh, <laughs> Uh, sugar number mommy. one, sugar mommy of Lagos, and oh, <laughs> uh, I'm an artist, uh, a businesswoman, and I don't want to suffer in my life. So, <laughs> hi everyone, my name is Adeso Itomi Wellington. I'm an actor, um, a performer, um, a businesswoman, many things, sure. but yeah, singer, singer. singer. Um, okay, so let's get straight into it. Um, I'm going to start off with this question. I'd actually like all of you to answer this, if that's okay. So I want to get your views on gender inequality in Nigeria. And part B of that question is, are you a feminist? Do you consider yourself a feminist? So I'm going to get you to start. Okay. Um, I think gender inequality is something that is a topic that we've discussed over and over again. And I think it's a topic that we can never get too tired of talking about until things actually change. It's one thing to talk about things and it's another thing to see things being done about it. Um, I think things are shifting, but not quick enough. Um, I think we still have a lot of work to do. And, and in terms of the word feminist, I think it's become this dirty word because people tend to focus on what it's not as opposed to what it actually is. Feminism is literally the advocacy of women's rights on the grounds of the equality of both sexes, of, 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 of the sexes rather, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's about time we, we allow women to, first of all, get paid what they should get paid when they, it's just, it's just basic, right? Um, but I think for so long, women have been oppressed um, and I think it's about time that we start talking about it. And I like the fact that there's so much, that there's so many conversations around feminism and what it is. I, I actually enjoy those conversations, even though a lot of times it ends in arguments. But I think these sort of conversations are really, really necessary. Um, so yes, I'm a feminist. I, I think everyone should be a feminist. Thank you, Aritua. All right, Shigumami Teni, what do you think? Uh, I'm definitely a feminist. Um, growing up, how I grew up, where my father died when we were young, and three women had to take care of my siblings and I, and you know, they thought they would never be able to run the business. And so, obviously, uncles, normal Nigerian movie story, uh, uncles came and wanted to take over. But that's where I got my zeal from, you know, seeing women, you know, take over position and be bosses and, and you know and tell men you have to go do that the drivers you have to go do that and, and they'll look like who are you to tell me but it, I'm in the position to tell you that you know what I'm saying so I'm definitely a feminist and you know especially in the music space where people try to tell you what to do and what not to do and this is how you should be and this is what you should be I say be yourself I mean, that's the best version of you you can give the world. If, if I'm somebody else, then I'm rubbing the world of my gift and who I'm supposed to be. Yeah. Thank you, Tenny. And well, baby girl, took okay. go on. Well, I think both of them have um, talked extensively about what you asked. Um, am I a feminist? 
Yes. Um, like Adesua, I am sick and tired of... I think, let's even address the females in here because I feel like we females are also the ones leading the conversations in that light. It's not a war between women and men. We don't want to be you as a man. You know, and I feel like we also need to work on our emotional intelligence as to playing the victim. Because, you know, I just what I said, it's the conversations have started. People have talked about it. Do we see the change? Maybe not yet. Maybe not quite. Do we continue to talk about it? Yes. But as we do, maybe we need to also change the way we speak about it. I hate when I see things on Twitter, on social media. It's all it's almost like, you know, we victimize ourselves as women already. You know, everything doesn't have to be a sexist conversation. You know, do we have a right to earn as much as the men? Of course, sometimes we even put in twice, as, twice the job. You know, so I, I like to encourage women out there to look at yourself, focus on your craft, work at being better than the best, male or female. I was raised in a home where there were no, we didn't see gender. My, I lost my parents when I was eight. So like you, my drive came from basically just wanting a better life. And there was no gender, you know, there was just good, all human beings being raised. So the moment we begin to put ourselves in those boxes, we've already lost the battle. So as Adesua said, I'm a feminist, uh, gender inequality, do we keep talking about it? Yes. Are we there? No, unfortunately. In this industry, we can all attest yeah, to the fact, yeah. as a female, you host a show, you might be the host, but automatically when the man is there, they think he's the host and you're his co-host. Yeah. Automatically, they go to him to say, this is what's coming up. And you're like, what am I here for, chop liver? You know, you, I, I worked on the radio for so many years with, with a guy. And I had to literally fight emotionally for my rights. Because you find that people walk into the studio and they will talk to him and ignore you. Mm -hmm. And we're doing the show together. So these conversations, we need to take it from this podium, our living rooms, our social circle, our churches, our mosques, wherever you can preach the message, please keep preaching it. Thank you, Toke. Um, I'm going to get Tenny to start this one off, uh, the next question. Do you think being a woman has positively or negatively affected your career? Both. Go on. Yeah. Um... Positively in the sense that when people see you, they underestimate you. And that's power. I like it when you underestimate me. It gives me room to show you how great I am. Because then you have, I mean, to me it's positive. I mean, you, you've, you've already seen me as this is where I can get. And so when I surpass that, it's like, oh, wow, okay. So to me, that's positive. At least I, I take I take the positive from it and and throw away the negative. Um, the negative side is just people dictating to you. At this age, you should be married. Uh, as you're gonna have children, you know. Uh, right, right. Dress better. Um, you, you know your degree is only going to just. Your, you know, your degree has ended in America. They don't do that in Nigeria. You cannot come up be speaking English for us. You understand, but through all that madness, I've 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 learned to teach people. You know, for example, my my driver. He said, "Oh, his wife cannot tell him to wash plates." I said, "What happened to your hand? Are you are you handicapped?" He said, "He said no, but his mother did not teach him to wash plates." So I said, "That's that's your problem, because." When you feel like, as a man, you have to go out to hustle and you can't let your wife work. Well, you, are, you are putting yourself in trouble. You walk, 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 walk and suffer yourself. When, if you let the wife work, she can assist. The woman was born, you and you, both of you to come together. They not say quarter. Half, half come together. Equality. Okay, I'd, first of all, I'd like to start off by saying that Personally, my superpower is the fact that I'm a woman. And there is absolutely nothing I would change about being a woman. If I had the chance, I'd come back as a woman again. Um, I have never paid attention, I, I, I don't know the word to use, to the struggles of being, and I, and I say this very loosely so that I'm not misunderstood. My mother raised me and she raised um, three of us all by herself, pretty much. So I have always seen 
women in positions of strength. That's just all I have ever known. So there is actually no other option for me. Nobody gets to tell me what I can and can't do. Nobody gets to tell me what I can and can't achieve. And nobody gets to tell me that, that there's, there's this limit over what I can do. I can do anything I put my mind to. And that's what I focus on. I keep making jokes that I, I'm worried that I, when I finally do have a daughter, that she's just going to be the most, she's going to think everything is amazing and she's going to be the most self-confident young woman because I think it's really important to realize that as a woman, you hold so much power. And that is why, to some certain extent, people try to suppress you because they know just how much power you hold. And when you realize how much power you do hold, it's no longer a struggle. You're not fighting with anybody else. You're trying to be the best version of yourself at, at any particular uh, given time. So in, in essence, this is all I know. And I don't have any other choice than to be a go-getter than to succeed, than to, be, than to be strong, than to break barriers and keep doing what everybody is telling me that I can't do. Oh, yes. So, yeah. Thank you, Adesua. It's okay. Um, I would say it's affected me pos more positively than negative. Yeah. I mean, the, the negatives, as Adesua and Tenny have pointed out, we live in a world where, you know, you literally, like Drake said, or who said it, you have to work with the negatives to get a better picture. Um, you know, being positive starts with the mind. And, you know, right from when we were kids, as females, if we're all going to be honest with ourselves here, I'm happy that this generation is changing and we're open and learning. And also the men are also open and they're listening now. Uh, when we grew up, when our parents' generation, they loved on their boys and they raised the girls. So the girl's life has been hard from when she was little because you're told what to wear, how to speak, what not to do. You know, it was almost like life had all these rules and you're just literally trying to find your feet and find out who you are. And unfortunately, there are no rehearsals. It's just one life. Um, so I've learned to use the negatives. It will always come. People will always set limits for you. People will always think. And then, you know, the funny thing is, it's not even the enemies outside or the people that you think are the problem. Sometimes it even starts from the home. Exactly. Family is the worst to convince about what you want to do because they keep seeing you as the little talker, the little tenny that's when you running around here in diapers. So you start the struggle of trying to basically stay true to who you want to be, the idea of who you think you are. And then we have a, a society where it's almost like it, the whole world is working against you as a woman. You know, trying to even get a house as a woman, a single woman is yeah. a problem. Yeah. Landlord will not list to you because they believe that if you're a single woman, you have plenty of boyfriends. You know, you start a job, you're working, you're making money, there must be a man that is sponsoring your life. If the man is not sponsoring your life, you cannot be making money. And it's sad because sometimes Women are the ones that champion these conversations. It's almost as if we can't believe it's poverty. Oh. Ah, you see, when it's not, it's poverty of the mind is a bad thing. It's a, it's a, see, me too, I was there. I wish to be one of those people that when they would talk about certain people, I'd be like, ah, she must be sleeping with somebody. How can, how can she reach that ceiling? And then, you know, things will start happening for you in your career, and you realize that just by being who you are, doors will open. And then you open your mouth and realize that, ah, and I was the one that used to champion the cause for this person. So, you know, you, you literally have to be aware at every point, working with the positives, but being aware of the negative doesn't mean that you let the negatives control you. Thank you, Soke. Um, so you mentioned uh, one or two instances, um, you know, maybe things that have, you know, happened to you, but I, I actually want to know when... Which, can you give me an example of an instance where a decision was made against you purely because you're a woman? And how did you handle it? I've had so many of those. Um, you know, just even in the workspace, it's... <laughs> and I'm sure even you, Tolu, you can probably bear witness to this. I, I mentioned hosting shows, for instance, you know. Um, you know, when you find out what your co-host is earning and you're trying to fight for the same pay, and they literally look at you and say he's a man. Well, I've had that being said to me before. He has plenty of responsibilities. He's a family man. He's a family. Ah, sister, your head is in this spirit. He's a family. So I say, if I want to use all my money to buy shoe, how is it your business? <laughs> if I want to use all my money to make weaves and wear makeup, how is it your business? Is it not the same amount of time we're going to stand on this yeah. stage? Thank you. It's okay. Uh, what about you, Adisla? Do you remember an instance where um, a decision yeah. was made against you? Yeah, like, like Toka said, it also has to do with pay. Um, and it's 
it's almost like the go-to example because the truth is that 90% of women face the same issue. There is so much power in being able to walk away from anything that's not going to serve you. There's so much power in that. You have to be able to, you have to be willing to be like, if you're not going to pay me what I think I deserve, I'm, I'm going to take, if you, if you do need the money, you find yourself in that situation, and you, that's fine too. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you ever do get to the position where you're able to walk away and be like, no, you can't do that. You can't pay me less just because I have tits. You know, it's not okay. So you have, to, you have to give me what I think I deserve. So it has to do with pay as well. And I've tried my best. I'm not 100%. I'm not there yet. But we're still pushing the fight. So, yeah. Um, like Toke said, well, she said, when it comes to dealing with the situations, um, it's best to use your emotional intelligence. So how do you tackle these situations? So if you're, um, you've been, I don't know, called to do a movie, mm -hmm. and you know that your male co-star, they've offered him more money. So... <laughs> no, let's, let's, let's say you're doing the I'm same actually, thing. I'm actually straight to the point. I, I'll tell you that I know. I would approach it from the fact that I know what, especially if you're in a scenario where you, you, there's this camaraderie with the rest of your cast members and they tell you what they earn, if they do, you can approach it head on and be like, I know this is what is being offered. I think I deserve the same. Why do you think I deserve less? Um, and you address it straight. I'm not, I'm not very good at... As a, as a person, I'm not very good at dilly dally, and I'm actually quite straight to the point and be like, and it's not a fight because I'm just asking for what I think I deserve. Thank you, Arisa. Tenny, I'm sure you probably have quite a few experiences. Well, for me, it wasn't even really work, it was family. Starting music itself. When I wanted to start, they called family meeting. <laughs> no, serious. They called family meeting because my sister was already doing music. And so, another one, like, when are people going to marry? Do you understand? All these Akwata students are just on TV. You are not lawyer. You are not doctor. What can we say you are? Artist. Musician. So, they called family meeting. And one of my aunties, that very educated, told me, no, I can't do it because my sister was doing it. And I stood up and I told her, and my mom was doing like this because she already knew, she knows her child, so she knows what was going to come next. So she was already doing this. <laughs> I moved like this. She said, <laughs> but I stood up and I told my auntie, I said, I'm very disappointed in you. For anything I can wait, Yes, I told her. And by the time it happened for me, she's the first person that will say, Jo, yes, she'll call me and say, Jo, you want to buy me post on my bro, my lord, Instagram. <laughs> she just start. She'll say, oh, can you help me post this person on Instagram? And so it just made me understand that you have to fight for yourself. Do you understand? Like, don't listen to what anybody has to say. Okay, all right, um, so I'm going to ask you uh, one more question because I know we've got to, I'm sure you guys have lots of questions. Uh, so when it comes to the gender equality movement, um, it's always, a lot of the conversations are, you know, men versus women, but I actually feel that a lot of women actually hold other women back. So for example, you know, both uh, three of you are in the entertainment industry, I'm sure you've had this loads of times where a woman says, are you going to get married? Don't you think you should leave this, get married, start a family? Has that happened to all of you? Yeah, of course. Oh, yeah. Of course, of course. Um, I think... I don't... Should I? Okay, or maybe... Should. I think... I mean, when I started on this panel, I did say something and I said, you know, I was going to also address the women because I feel like we women... I already said it before too. We, we, let's just call it what it is. We are our biggest problems. We work against ourselves the most. Yes. Men don't say these things as hard as we say it. Even this feminism thing is a woman that will say, what does she feel like? Yes. She's acting like a feminist. We're a bit too hard on ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I get it. Sometimes when you, I listened to Michelle Obama speak one time and she talked about how someone said to her she would never go to Harvard, she would never be a graduate. People project their fears on you. Mm -hmm. yes. I understand. Do you understand? Just because where you are, we might have grown up together in the same diapers, in the same medical compound, and you probably thought that we'll probably have the same end. Just because I'm trying to aspire to be more, it shouldn't threaten you. But yeah. unfortunately, as a woman, you know, instead of them to ask simple questions, sis, 
how are you doing this thing? Show me the way. They can't. It's a, it's a, they not begin to find other means. It's either she, maybe she's doing jazz, maybe a man is paying, maybe she's not really focused. You know, and the men see these things, and it breaks my heart. The men say it. The other day I went to the VFS office. I had uh, to pick up my passport, and a woman there behaved so badly, and it broke my heart that a man on the corridor said to me, now woman, now your type. And I looked at her and I said, as a woman, look, look at what a man is saying about us. Why are we so wicked to ourselves? Why? What would it kill you to tell the next sister that she looks nice? It's not going to dim out your light if you try and light somebody, somebody else's light. Yeah. Like, it, it, it is so frustrating, honestly, because we keep preaching. I stopped going to speaking seminars. All these women, I tell, please don't invite me. Because you all are yeah. mean girls. Yeah. The mean girls are the ones where they shout um, women empowerment the most. Who have you empowered? Who have you helped? Who have you put on? Even if it's referral, even if it's who, we need to begin to look after ourselves. Even though we'll not move forward. Men can say, they, men stick up for themselves. Though. A man will defend another man's yeah. pay. Yeah. A woman will tear down another woman's yeah. pay. Yeah. Why? Yeah. A man will say, pay will come more. He deserves this. Woman go to that meeting. Why do you want to hire Tokyo Makinwa? They won't say, why? I just don't like her. She's just not a brand, whatever. What has she done? They cannot say. And it's a woman. Hi. I don't know. Aunt, maybe Jesus should come. I'm tired because this woman saying uh, it tired me. Please look at from this. Let me not. Let me not take too much time. We need to begin to do better. We can only yeah. tell ourselves the truth. Your next yeah. sister is not your competition. Come on, if she wins, as, as this was said, she's opening the door for you to win. It's okay to aspire to be a baby girl. I'm not jealous of any other girl. Join me in the club. <laughs> Join me. Let me copy you too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I think oh. last. Let me, one more question. Oh, sorry. Go on. Go Thank on. Again. So I think I think in general we just need to hold ourselves to, to to higher standards as as human beings, whether you're male or female, because I think in in general we have this this thing that we do where we tend to pit women against each other, and I don't know why we do it because it's like the star. The, we have so many stars in the sky. I don't see them fighting for way to shine. And it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Why can't two women be successful in the same field? Why do I have to choose one? Why can't I appreciate both of them? It's the same thing. We need to stop. We need to do better in general. And I keep saying it that it really matters about how we bring our sons and daughters up. Because most of these things start from upbringing. You tell your daughter to be home at six, you tell your son, see you tomorrow. You can't teach them different things because they're going to grow up with these ideologies and based on what you, the way you've brought them up. So it's really important about the way we bring our children up. It's really hard to teach an old dog new tricks. But when you, you, you pay attention to how you're bringing your children up, it really matters because I, th I think that's the only way we can pretty much turn things around. And let's stop pitting women against each other. It makes no sense. I love seeing many successful women in the same field. I like it because it's such, it makes such a huge statement that it's possible, that it's possible to also appreciate the next woman. When I see that anyone is trying to put me, pit me against anyone else in the industry, I, that's when I even start showing them extra love. I will put love, love, I. I will love the eye. I will put stars. That I will do also because I think it's really important that we start showing support because when they see that, they can't come to you next time and be like, try to put you, pit you against the same, same person because they see that you guys are showing each other love. So it's really important to just appreciate the next woman for the, thing that, for the things that she's doing and stuff. Thank you, Arisa. Yeah. So, so the last thing I just wanted to quickly say is, you know, women too. Let's stop, you know, because some, some people take this feminism thing and turn it around. Yeah. Do you understand? Don't 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 push a man. Don't push a man. Feminism isn't about hating yeah, men. Do not, it's not do about not hating push men. a man because of feminism. Do you understand? Don't 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 say because I'm I'm a woman, then I can hit a man and get away with it. Yeah. That's 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 violation. You you can go to jail for that. Yeah. So don't I say because of a woman, then then you're not going to abuse a man or, or treat a man badly. So let's let's be guided. Yeah, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Well, I, I have one or two more questions, but I've been told that... Can I? Oh, okay, sorry. I can't ask any more questions. Um, do you guys have any questions for our... <laughs> Ibuka, okay. you are not allowed all to right. ask a question. Ibuka has a question. It's fair enough. Yes. Please, we're not going to answer. Uh, do we have a mic for Ibuka, please? 
Yeah, so I, I just wanted to find out your perspective on all mic. of this. <laughs> it's gone. Because um, you, you have a very interesting sort of background. Mm -hmm. You're from royalty. And um, there's a lot of belief that um, the way patriarchy works in Nigeria is because of traditions mm. and customs. Your father is heavily traditional. Mm -hmm. How did that impact you growing up? Because I want to believe you're also a feminist. So how yeah. were you able to do that with the kind of upbringing you had? Um, I'm definitely a feminist, 100% a feminist. I'm, however, not an angry feminist. I believe that um, women and men should be treated equally, but they're not the same. Um, when it comes to my family, I have to be honest, there were, uh, I've, I've ha had so many occasions where my dad said, you can't do that, you're a woman. And I just was like, who said? I'm going to do it. So instead of that suppressing my you know, thirst for success, it actually made me want to go harder. So from a very, very young age, I kind of felt like there's nothing I can't do. There's absolutely nothing I can't do. Thank you. All right, anybody else? The lady in the stripes. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Genevieve Ume, and I am an actor. Uh, my question is, thank you so much, ladies, for speaking. Um, I've literally been blessed by everything you've said. Um, Ms. Toke, you said, um, how do you strengthen yourself emotionally? We discussed, obviously, working on your craft, supporting your fellow women, and letting adversity drive you. Um, I'm 24 right now, and obviously, I'm working on my craft, you know, letting ad adversity drive me. And I wondered, um, obviously, I know you're in your 20s, uh, Ms. Tenney. What did you do in your 20s, and, like, what was your goals, and, like, I don't know. I feel like I don't know what mm. tomorrow holds, and I, I'm sure there are a lot of young people in the audience thinking mm. the same thing. But at that stage in your life, what was the plan, and like, how did you stay grounded? Mm. Can I primarily? can I answer that real quick? Um, yeah, there are too many things you asked in your question, but one thing that kept popping up is, and I had this conversation with my cousin just two weeks ago. I feel like there's a lot of unrest amidst and among young people. Give yourself time. I made all the mistakes I wanted to make in my 20s, and I loved making those mistakes. Don't let anybody rush you. You know, the, we, we keep looking at other people's success stories without remembering that it's years and years and years in the making. I interviewed Sound Sultan a long time ago, and he left me with something that was so profound. He probably doesn't even remember this. He said to me, you know, when people start off and they can see you driving your B2, from B2 you drive your Honda, from Honda you buy your first Mercedes, from, you know, there's a journey, there's a struggle, there's a process. But if you just come on the scene and you start to climb a tree from the top, you will crash. So a lot of depression is going on out there with young people. People are depressed because they keep looking at the now of somebody is somebody else's story. Her now might have been eight, nine, 15 years in the making where there was no social media where you could see that. So it's okay for you not to know what you want to do at 20 something. Trust me. Some people wake up at 50 and they've done something that they thought they were supposed to be doing and it's a midlife crisis. So the fact that you don't know is also working in your advantage. There's an unrest in your spirit. So you just let that guide you to find out what you're good at. So don't rush yourself. People are depressed. I know it's clinically induced as well, but I find that sometimes we rush ourselves so much. Enjoy the process. You're only 20 watts. I beg, enjoy. Live life. If you wake up, enjoy yourself, but don't enjoy too much. But, you know, it's true now. Enjoy. So that when you turn 30 something, you can look back and say, I did it my way. Did it work? Maybe not, but I'm still on the process. <laughs> Thank you, Toke. Um, just to add to what Toke said, you, you're, you said you're an actress? Act, okay, so this is something that you want to do. This is something that you're passionate about. Um, so if you already know what you want to do, just figure out different ways to better yourself. Take you know more lessons, do courses. Um, I think that's something that a lot of people don't do. You kind of really, you, you, you're in a in a certain job. You kind of think, okay, that's it. But there are always ways to better yourself. Uh, travel the world. If, if, I had, if I had realized how much I love traveling, I would have probably done way more than that. I would have probably not even gotten a mortgage when I was in my 20s, and I would have just traveled, and not backpacking, because I don't do that. But, <laughs> but just, you know, traveled, seen the world, meet people, make friends, make relationships, you know, and just see. Because when you're, like, older, let's say you're married, you can't really do as much, you know, because you have responsibilities. All right. Can I take this lady with a stripy dress? Just one more question. Please, please, please. Okay. All right. Hi. Oh, hi. Um, so I just want to ask a question in terms of um, 
how you deal with criticism. So I've noticed like, you know, a lot of times we like as women, yeah, as you said, we go through like, uh, we get a lot of criticism from other women. And as Toke said, you know, the whole like women empowerment thing, to be honest, I personally think as well that a lot of it is just for social media and it just looks good rather than like people actually meaning it. Cause it's true, a lot of girls are mean. Um, so I just wanted to find out, because all three of you, I've noticed, are very, like, positive people. How do you actually deal with, like, criticism? Because I know, like, many times you guys don't actually, like, address it. But I'm sure, like, sometimes some things do get to you. So I just want to understand, like, how you actually deal with that, like, personally. So, I don't know. Okay. Um, for me, if you're going to thrive, like, in life in general, you have to be able to separate the wheat from the chaff. Not everything that's being said to you should be taken on board. Not every criticism is an attack. Sometimes you also learn from some of the things that are being said to you. But you have to know, I think it really, really starts, you, you have to know who you are. When you know exactly who you are, someone can't come and tell you who, they, who, who you are. When someone says something, if someone comes to me and says, you're a snob, I can easily throw that away because that couldn't be further from the truth because why? I know me. And um, it's really important to know who you are. Also, I think a support system is really important. While we're all championing the I'm, I'm strong, I'm strong, everybody needs somebody to talk to. You need that one person that if you see something, you're just like, can you imagine what this person has said? It's really important to be able to get it off your chest. Nobody is telling you to digest it. and You're going to blow up. Everybody needs to talk to somebody. And that person for me is my husband. It's really important that you have somebody to... No, I'm not... It's really important that you, <laughs> that you have somebody to talk to, to offload to, because otherwise you're going, you're going to burst. And you need someone that can set you back on the right path when you're starting to go the wrong way. Because sometimes people are going to say some really hurtful things. And most of the time it comes from people that absolutely know nothing about you. And they feel like they do. So it's really important that you talk about it if it did hurt you. Throw it away if it doesn't bother you. Address it if you want to, because I also think that's really important sometimes. It's okay to address certain things. Don't go about answering Sorry, just everybody. To, just to even but, add to yeah. what she's saying, because I didn't want to forget about this. Um, it's, it's, I like everything Adesua has said, and I agree with it, but I, I also want to be very honest with you. Not everybody, it takes a process to get to where she is right now to say this. So you see this criticism, once you... Accept that it's a process you're going to have to walk through. Nobody was born strong. Let's not lie to you. Have I cried? Oh, yes. Have I felt, ah, God, calm down, born, fire, <laughs> weary, you know, this. Yes, but then you have to give yourself time. Emotionally, give yourself time to grow. It's again, what I said, we're too hard on ourselves sometimes. Okay, do you then? The world will adjust. Okay, yeah. what? What are those insults kill somebody? Tell yeah. me. What's that? What do they want to say now that will kill you? Yes, yes. Okay, so I've been told that that's it. Thank you so much, ladies. Ladies and All gentlemen, right. please put your hands together for them one more Thank time, you. please. It says a lot that we have a full house for an all-women panel, ladies and gentlemen. You are strong, you are beautiful, and we, we, we are happy to have you. Please gather.